it's just Ryan Poles constantly preaches value. Value wise, is it worth it? So you mentioned Brandon Marshall. Brandon Marshall was a fourth round pick. If we go through and just take top five wide receivers drafted in the past, we have AJ Green who did not win a Super Bowl. Calvin Johnson, who did not win a Super Bowl. Braylon Edwards did not win a Super Bowl. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just going off memory here. Larry Fitz was in a Super Bowl, but didn't win one. Charles Rogers did not win a Super Bowl. Andre Johnson did not win a Super Bowl. Peter Warwick did not win a Super Bowl. You got to go all the way back to 1996, where Keyshawn Johnson was taken at number one overall. And he was taken by the Jets. He definitely didn't win one with them, right? The history shows us that a top five wide receiver doesn't necessarily make the impact that, for example, a top five quarterback could make. Everybody's just giving it their best shot. Nobody really truly knows what players are going to become at the end of the day, right? My mindset is always that this thing's a crapshoot. Give me more darts to throw at the dartboard. You know, the more draft picks I could accumulate, I feel the safer the future is. And, you know, the more you can do with it overall. But hey, you never know. You really, truly never know. I just, this is in no specific order whatsoever. I'm sure I left some guys out here and there, but I just, you know, took a good handful of guys and kind of put it together. So we got Nick Bosa, Micah Parsons, Miles Garrett, TJ Watt, Max Crosby, Brian Burns, and I even added, added Montez Sweat in there. And as you can see, these guys, a lot of them were first round talent guys, right? So that's defensive end. And when we look at defensive tackles, we kind of see the same thing going on, right? So I, I just, once again, a handful of guys, no specific order. We got Aaron Donald, Chris Jones, Dexter Lawrence. We got Williams, Cameron Hayward, DeForest Buckner, Jonathan Allen. I'm not trying to knock on Marvin Harrison Jr. I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't draft Marvin Harrison Jr. I'm just kind of trying to lay out some of these tendencies out there and whatnot. And when we do take a look at the wide receivers, right, and I took a good handful of them, Justin Jefferson, Tyreek Hill, A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb, DJ Moore, Amon Ross St. Brown, Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams, Keenan Allen, Jamar Chase. And here we see a lot of fluctuation, right? A lot of these drafts are stacked pretty deep with wide receivers. So you can find guys like Tyreek Hill in the fifth round. I mean, just coming to mind, Antonio uh, Brown was a fifth round pick as well. So you have more of a chance of drafting a position like this later in the round and having it succeed than, for example, you know, let me bring this back up. For example, like a defensive end. In terms of positional value, and we had this conversation with Jacob Infante about positional value. I love that conversation and like positional need and all that good stuff. In my mind, I played it out, right? And Paul, you said this, like you're drafting for a wide receiver three, right? Yes, granted, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen might get hurt. Roman Dunze turns into wide receiver two for a good chunk of the season. That's all hypothetical. And let's say it's a, a perfect world, right? Let's say you play out this offseason and you come out of this draft with Caleb Williams and Roma Dunze, and now training camp's coming up, and we're talking about can we get Yannick Ngakwe back for a cheaper contract, right? Can we address the defensive end position and yada, yada, yada? How do we add depth to defensive tackle, this, that, and the other? And I feel like that route, while it's fun because it's offense, there's a lot of question marks. It's a rookie quarterback with a rookie wide receiver, and two veteran wide receivers. And yeah, like you can only spread the ball around so much. So let's say in a perfect world, you have Roma Dunze with Caleb Williams and he's playing great. Roma Dunze is getting you 700 yards maybe and like five to five to seven touchdowns. Can I interview yeah. you real quick? Yeah. Listen, I'm so far on one end of this whole thing where mm -hmm. if Marvin Harrison Jr. falls to nine, I, I, would, be, I would be so happy <laughs> because it guarantees me a trade partner. Yeah. Same. That that that's how I feel about the wide receiver position. And I know Rich, you were laughing at probably the idea. I would pass him up. The other part so, of this is if Caleb Williams is everything you hope he is, we're talking about like you want to compare to Aaron Rodgers. This is a guy that made Randall Cobb like a pro bowler. So Julian Edelman was on his podcast talking about uh how Tom Brady, you know, he would he would invite him to workouts and on a normal day with wide receiver training in the summer, you know, they ask you to run routes, route trees fix each other's like body positioning and stuff like that. Quarterback invites you, they ask you to run 25, 30 routes, right? Like that's a heavy, heavy work day, right? You're running 25 hard full speed routes. Julian Edelman mentioned that. I think he said he, Tom Brady had him run 75 to 90 routes, right? And the whole time Tom Brady is saying, look, when I throw the ball, I expect you to put all your weight on the inside foot leverage 
peel back and hit the sideline. And Julian Edelman just constantly kept talking about how Tom Brady, a quarterback, was probably the person that made him better at wide receiver than his wide receivers coach, his head coach, his coaches all the way through, right? When a quarterback can dictate what they want you to do, you become more successful. And that's why I was never in the favor of the Justin Fields narrative. Like he just needs three number one wide receivers and he's going to be a stud. Like what? that's a problem. Where was Julian Edelman drafted? What round? Seventh round. Seventh round pick 11. Yeah. Th that's what we're talking about. That That's why positional value. That That's exactly it. You're spending your 1-1 one, one at quarterback. Ideally, the risk has already been taken. You don't need to pad that room with guys to make Caleb Williams that much better. You already gave him DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. You're talking about a, you're playing the hypothetical offseason game. You come out of the draft with Roma Dunze and Caleb Williams, and you're just fingers crossed that everybody's gelling, has chemistry, and now you're hoping that you can fill some positions of need on defense, right? So you're saying Caleb, Roma Dunze in a perfect world with everybody healthy and Caleb Williams being a 4,000-yard passer – Romo Dunze is coming out of the season with maybe 700 yards and five touchdowns, and he's probably in the rookie of the year competition. Flip that over, and now you have Caleb Williams. Now you take Jared Verse, right? In an ideal scenario, Jared Verse on this defense, and part of this is also I don't think defense is the most inconsistent part of football. You can have a top five defense one year and a 15th ranked defense the next year and nothing changed, right? So you can't rest on your laurels because the last six, seven games of the year, you were a top five defense. You still have to improve defense because that stuff is always changing. Somebody gets a step slower. Somebody messes up their gapping position. Somebody's coach that they liked and was the secret sauce just left. And so now you got Jared Verse. A good year for Jared Verse opposite – a good, like, a Jervon Dexter year that's up, uh, a Montez Sweat year. Jared Verse should end with, like, nine sacks, ten sacks, 11 sacks, Yeah, right? So I'd rather have Caleb Williams, 11 sacks from Jared Verse, and go get Tyler Boyd or Hunter Renfro in training camp or wait for a training camp wide receiver cut. Somebody's getting cut in, in training camp this year that you don't expect. Somebody's going to be a cap casualty that you still don't expect. We just got Stefan Diggs traded for a second, essentially second or mid third round pick 21 days before the draft. You don't see defensive ends getting traded today. 